right, so we've got a heat pump that has auxiliary heat, which is a gas furnace, and uh, it's not running. Uh, look at that. See water. That ain't good. All right, let's see if we can get into this thing. Trap motor's running. She gave up. You're gonna quit on me already. Let's see if, uh, oh, luckily that didn't pop. All right. The infamous 32. All right, 32, release pressure switch. Let's take a look. 32, low heat pressure switch. Not closing or reopened. And here's all the definitions for it. So let's dive in there a little further. Uh, could be low pressure gas too. This has propane, so. So the propane comes in through black iron, which is nice. Comes over, down, and boom. So let's see if that's closed, and then we'll start digging in. Don't want to start moving things right off the bat, but I want to know what's going on with this water here. That don't make no sense. Looks like it's coming. Come in there on that coil. I wonder if we're plugging up. From now, I doubt it would be that because it would do it to there. Hmm. Don't feel anything leaking up here. There's no water lines up here. I don't think. Exhaust stack's two and a half inch, which is that weird old stuff. I think it's two and a half. Yeah, it's two and a half. Let's go ahead and get the heat first, and then we'll figure out what the water's from. Okay, not get get sidetracked. All right, so we checked the condensate trap. It's clear, no water buildup. That's usually one of your biggest problems. Now we did just get a bunch of snow, so I'm wondering if our exhaust stacks might be plugged up. We'll yank this burner box off open here and see uh, if there's anything going on in there. I uh, did check my switch here. It is closed, so it's allowing power through. We're going to start it up again, uh, then we'll open up that box and see if it uh, comes on that way. Here's a little trick I'll use. I'll cut this thing about right here, move this plug to there. Then that hose gives me something to use to get down in here and blow through these here. Now the best way to clean this thing out obviously is to take these clamps off and wash it out in the sink. But if you have one that's glued, you can blow it out whether it be with a hose to make it easier to get into if you can't remove it. Or CO2 cartridge works kind of good too. But flushing it with water is the best thing and shaking it and cleaning it all out. So throw that out there. Okay, I reset it and went back to the heat pump, but as I cleaned up some of this water, look at that, somehow, it's supposedly taking it off of that freaking pipe. Look, look inside there. I'm assuming. Jeez. Gotta love it. Not locked in there, it's locked in there. What the heck? It's almost like the freaking uh yeah, it's like it's shooting it. How in the world? That's on the positive side, so it's almost impossible. Makes me think I am not sure how it's happening. They got this back to the, to the, uh, I noticed the humidity in here was 50% uh, on the thermostat, which, got to see if this thing's hooked up to the thermostat or not, it may not be. Good grief. This is something weird going on here. I have to figure this out. 
Also kind of concerning is the pipe's not hot, so I wonder if the heat pump's not working right either on top of everything else that's not working right. Hmm, that's nice. Hmm. Let's uh, see how this set up. They do have the humidifier ran into here, so they're looping it still through the humidistat downstairs, which they don't need to do. So we're going to have to fix that, find out why there's a water leak, and find out why the furnace is not running. Uh, when I came up here, it said auxiliary heat. I have a funny feeling this may not be set up correctly. Let's go through and make sure the settings are right. Set up for heat pump, furnace, humidifier. That seems correct. All right, so I went ahead and unhooked this. Got it wired directly down to it. This is one of the biggest things I see wrong usually, and I don't know if it was like that or not, but it's supposed to come straight in, hit that. And make sure this locks in like that like that and then if you got to do a little bending make sure that thing stays as level as possible so it doesn't trail back out of there so we'll make sure everything else is okay it so far seems like everything's wired upstairs correctly so let's go ahead and finish checking some of these other things out. Okay, so all of our wiring looks to be correct. I got a common wire sharing to the humidifier, to the outside unit, and then down there to the thermostat. So I got good there. Here's the humidifier coming on brown, heading up there on the two wire. Everything seems to be correct. So we'll go ahead and try this thing again. Um, when it came on a second ago, is the blower, and uh, no. Uh, I don't believe there's a call for heat, so draft motor seems to be all right. Igniter is one of the newer style. We're not tripped there. We'll still got to check for intake yet. So let's go ahead and supposedly this has been checked. We'll make sure. Oh yeah, it's new looking. Still ain't sure how that water got through that. That makes no sense. I'm going to check inside here, see if there's anything in there. So we don't have any water down there at all, which there shouldn't be. Everything looks fairly okie dokie up there. Hmm. Our burners actually look pretty good. No real rust in there on that, which is nice. Looks pretty good, pretty good. So, for LP gas, that's pretty good there. Um, I'm gonna go up there and turn it back on, see what we get. We'll, uh, that's not good. We'll go ahead and uh, see if it runs with the cover off. We're calling for auxiliary heats, 25 degrees, lockouts 30 degrees. So it should start running. Key what we got. Okay, so she's running. What a surprise. Don't feel a major heat coming back at me, which is a good thing. definitely know when those uh, heat exchangers are starting to plug up. What year is this thing? Looks like it is a 06 on that also. So with it having the heat pump it doesn't run near as much. Not bad. Like I said heat pump shuts off at 30. What I'll do is I will cut the cover on slowly and see if it sucks it in. Ew. It sucks it in pretty good. It ain't, it ain't horrible, but it's, it's definitely pulling on it. in there and seal it up and see if it'll start over on its own since it's running now okay it's still sealed up and running I should clean that off a little 
better. Let's go ahead and kill it and see if it could start over on its own. So she'll go on a complete cooldown and start over. This is a timed on to second stage based off of the algorithm that Control Board comes up with. They didn't wire it up to uh, automatically stage up from the thermostat. Which is one of the few boards that actually figures out the algorithm and uh, does a fairly decent job at it. It's a cumulative runtime. So, unlike the other ones, it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 12 minutes, whatever they got a timer set for. So, we'll give this just a touch and see what happens here. Alright, so we do have atomized mist up here. I think what happened was that since it's a recirculative humidifier, it just goes down, up, down, up. It was running so much that it was just, the humidity was so high that it was just condensating. Um, so, I mean, you have high humidity coming in, going out. It's the only logical thing. It surely isn't from uh, water line dripping. Nothing up there is wet. We have nothing in the um, evaporator box. And like I said, it's 48% now and it's 50 when I got here. You there. Two, let's do it again. Two, three, one. So what the heck's a 31? 31 is heat pressure switch did not close or reopen. So it's acting stupid. But yet it's still trying to light. That makes no sense. Denied. Start over. We're gonna go grab our manometer. Check this, see what we're actually pulling on this. It's only a good way to know what's going on. Alright, so they have a concentric kit, so we know it's not an air intake issue most likely. And the heat pump looks like it's ran too much. At least it ain't packed in ice. So, let's go ahead and go back inside and check see what's going on in there yet. Alright, so I went out and grabbed my manometer. In the meantime, I got a 31 code. Now, it is high heat pressure switch did not close or reopen. So, one or the other. Low pressure switch or relay did not close or reopen. <coughs> so, and make sure this is all connected right. Make sure this is open. It seems to be open. Check here on this. Alright, I just tried blowing through this and it did not want to let nothing out. Clear on this, but not on the box, I don't think. I need to take a look inside there. Okay, so went ahead and yanked out the condensate trap, knocked out the indraft motor there, and sure and lo and behold, things aren't looking too good. Looks like delamination to me. So, freaking heat exchanger is going to need replaced. Sometimes I'll pull the blower motor to make certain, but you can see that little hole's got crap in it. Not my ideal of a good time. I'm going to call back see if we've had any history of this or not. But it's looking that way. I'm going to look at the blower section just to make certain. If I got stuff eaten through, then it's, it's shot. Well, luckily I brought the flame sensor out. Because you know how easy it is to get into it. And that looks like crud. So we'll get that cleaned up and let's get that blower pulled out of there. Something tells me that this long stripped wire that was set in by the furnace had a dual purpose because if it's just perfect and when you blow through it now, it's just terrific. So I would say this has happened before. And guess what? It's going to happen again if you don't replace heat exchanger. So that's what we got going on. Always something. I think I was setting up there. So, yep. Yeah. 
Oh, we'll go ahead and this will run when I get done, but the problem is, it's like I said, it's going to happen again. So, heat exchanger is going to need replaced. I'm going to go ahead and get the numbers off of this. I'm still going to check the blower, make sure that there's nothing down there, but it's pretty obvious what's going on. All right, we're going to see if we can blow some of that out, but the heat exchanger needs replaced. Probably could rinse it out, but it's going to plug up either way. We just need to get the new heat exchanger. So let's uh, go ahead and get this thing back together. system should run now, and uh, we'll get that stuff taken care of. All right, so <clears throat> we just ran the test through the furnace, and now we're checking the humidifier. It's working. So humidifier is fine. We got that set a little bit lower now. So hopefully it doesn't run. So now we just got to try out the heat pump. All right, heat pump finally came on. It had its own internal delay on it. This usually don't run unless it's uh, above 30. It's getting hot, and I guess this was checked not too long ago, so it should be fine. There's ice on the blades. is why it's shaking a little bit. So basically we're going to get them a new heat exchanger and uh, get that changed out. Uh, hopefully blowing that out made it... Uh, We'll make it last a little longer, but we should be able to get back shortly and get that changed out. All right, so we're back and we got this heat exchanger taken out. We got the new one built. Now, I'm going to point out a couple things here. This right here is one of the most important things that gets forgotten sometimes. So make sure you don't forget that thing. That goes between your top primary and your secondary. And what that does is when the blower's blowing, it causes it to ricochet to the front of the heat exchanger and then go on out. If you don't have it there, the air goes straight up and the limit will start tripping and your temperature rise, everything will be out of whack because you're not moving the air across the heat exchanger before it goes on out through the ductwork. <clears throat> not all of them have this, but you got to make sure you always check all of them when you do this because they don't give this to you as far as I know. Uh, I don't. It's not even in the paperwork to know whether or not they've got it. Um, we're going to look at the delamination here in a minute. It's really weird when they put this thing together at the factory. They glued the living crap out of this thing. I had to pry that off. That's how bad it was. And right now, I can't even get it off. It's, uh, we're literally prying at it to get this thing off here. Yeah, it's really tight. Not sure why. I've got all the screws out. So... Let's take a look at this heat exchanger's uh, secondary. All right, so here's a better look at it. You can see it's delaminating. You can see the white back here in the back compared to this up to here. The white's gone. It's kind of hard to tell, but you can tell that that's not fully open. There's one piece. You can see it right there. See how that's... Yeah, just got gunk in there that don't have it, there it does. So, this is something to keep an eyeball out for. These uh, don't always rust all the way through. This one here didn't. Um, usually, you can see something wrong coming through. Try to look at this other side. I'm trying to remember which side's which. Usually you can see some white stuff in between here and stuff, but they'll start letting go. Now usually I put this thing all together and tear it all out first. As you can see, there was no thought put in there where how you get that in there. That one there's easy to get to, no screws in the way. This one on the other hand, kind of gotta use two extensions and you can get down there, but you can see the screws block you from coming straight up normal. So, yep, we got it in there. That's supposed to go on the bottom side of it, but I don't think the thickness of the metal there is going to make a difference. It, I've actually lost these before or didn't know where they were or whatever and actually made one out of a piece of sheet metal and screwed it down into here and here and, you know, just dimmicked it as best I could and it worked out fine, but... Uh, you definitely got to have it in there. Just thought I'd point that last thing out there. Uh, other than that, guys, uh, just check everything. Don't stop at one and just keep going. So, until next time, guys. Catch you on the next one.